So we're back to our tier list. Since the last tier list, we have done about seven Asha War highlights, so I think it's about time to rank them. So last time I did the adjustments in the beginning of the video, I think I'm gonna do it towards the end so I can see where I need to move things around so that areas don't become too cluttered. So if you wanna see the adjustments and what the final tier list of what we've done so far in our Asha War highlights, you could go check it towards the end of the video. There are timestamps. But if you want to see the reasonings for why I put some Asha Wars at certain spots, check out prior videos or just continue watching the video. Whichever. So first off, we're going to be talking about Flaming Strike. Flaming Strike is an amazing Asha War. I actually use this a lot whenever I don't know what to put on build. It not only has combo potential when you do the first fire part and do the combo, the follow up after. It's great for crowd control. You just spam it, very low FP. Honestly, there's no like reason not to use it. Sometimes you don't even need to use your basic move set of your weapons. Just spam flaming strike and just do a chase down if you do need to get that last little chip because it does do a ton of damage and you do have the shard of alexander and you do have a good amount of stats you know aligned properly it's just insane so i will put this where i think it deserves to be it deserves to be at a very high spot in fact i think it's probably one of the best pvp ash awards as of now it used to be a close contender with a different ash war which we will be talking about in this video but currently in patch 1.09.1 I think playing strike is probably just at the top. It's, it's just uh, it's just great. No drawbacks. Great to use. So next up is the Ash War, the Sacred Ring of Light. It's very similar to the Halo Scythe version of this, except for the Halo Scythe shoots a bigger like disc compared to the Ash War version. So honestly, they're very similar. They both have a hitbox when you're doing the initial swing before the disc comes out and you know aims at your enemy. And after the initial swing, the disc homes onto your enemy. It's pretty easy to dodge, I will say. It doesn't come out the quickest. And again, because it is easy to dodge, you could just approach in and you know rush down your enemy. And because this is like a projectile Ash War, sometimes you have to like think about how is it like compared to like Blood Blade or Storm Blade or Ice Spear. Unfortunately, the Sacred Ring of Light does fall short. It's also doing holy damage, which is probably one of like the elemental attributes that's resisted the most compared to the others, like fire, lightning, and all that. So it's kind of unfortunate. I'll put it right there. I think it belongs somewhere in C, right after charging forth. It's not the best projectile, but it's not the worst. So I think it's kind of fitting to be a C. I can see you putting it towards like the end of B, but I don't think it will go like to S or an A. Especially not the Ash War version of it. Maybe the Halo Scythe one, it will be better. Just it is a bigger disc. Maybe it does more damage, but this is talking about the Ash War version. All right, so next one, we're gonna be talking about shield bash. It's just getting your shield and bashing it on someone. It's only one hit. So that's very uh, key to note compared to the other one, which is shield crash. And you can apply this onto small, medium, and large shields or heavy shields. I forget what they call it. So it comes out relatively quick. It's great for tanking hits, especially if you do have a lot of stamina. If you do use shield bash, you're able to tank some of the hits at the cost of your stamina. So if you do have a whole bunch of it, you could take like even a chumping like two-handed great sword. So it's pretty great for that. And you're trading in doing counter hit damage. So it's actually doing a good amount of damage. And if you do have status on it, you could do some status buildup and, you know, the one hit. It's not the most reliable, but it's pretty decent in doing so. And the distance of where Shield Bash could go is pretty, like, decently far. It definitely covers a medium roll length away. So if you do hit someone in a panic roll, you could hit them with Shield Bash and it will most of the time hit them, which is pretty great. So it flows really great in combat, especially if you are getting like that little poke hit, that R2 from if you're using a thrusting sword or some other thrusting type weapon. Just hitting them with that and following up with shield bash, it just flows very well. So honestly, I was kind of surprised how this went, even when I used a small shield. I think it was a surprisingly good Ash 4. I might be at the top of C for right now. I might change that in the future. Either it'll be the top of C or definitely the bottom of B. 
I think like some most of the time when you do hit someone with the uh, you know the shield bash as a roll cash, you can just do the same thing with your normal weapon, and you'll probably do just as much damage or even more depending on which shield you use. And then benefits that you get, you know, from you know taking hits with the actual shield that is kind of put up in the uh, guard stance before you do it. So you could tank hits pretty cleanly. You could probably just do the same again with some of the other ones that are more hit trading, but at the cost of HP. So it kind of do a similar role, but just the other ones do more damage in comparison to the shield. Okay, I'm gonna move it back to the end of B. If B gets too cluttered by the end of today, I'm gonna move this down to C. So, but that's that's where I'm thinking right now. It's either the end of B or the top of C. Cause I did enjoy my time with them, and I think. It does have a time and place of when you would like to use it. Definitely a lot of fun, would recommend. So next up is Troll's Roar. This is an Ash Award I had a lot of fun with. It's very easy to buff. One, using the Highland Axe, using the Shard of Alexander, and also using the Roar's Medallion. All this together buffs the damage of that initial Roar, and I think the follow-up too. And it does a lot of damage. On the showcase, I wasn't able to show much of the follow-up because one, I didn't know it, and also even after when I saw how the follow-up is, it's actually a lot slower than I thought, and I think I probably wouldn't use it that often. It's definitely good to throw it out like in surprise situations, but definitely like if you do it once and people know the trick, it's gonna be very hard to do it again. Because it does cost a lot of stamina and you are stuck in an animation for a long time. Because already Trolls Roar does have a long animation. But the trade-off of this long animation that you're stuck onto is that one, you do have a ton of hyper armor. You could tank so many hits and the hyper armor comes out really early in the Ash of War. And then the range of how far Trolls Roar is, is surprisingly large. I think sometimes when I think I didn't hit an enemy, I actually hit them and probably did the finishing blow because of how much damage you're doing. So I'm thinking about putting Troll's Roar either at somewhere in A, like either at the lowest part of A, or definitely in B. I think I'm leaning towards B, like the higher end of B. Like I do like it more than Earthshaker. I might put it at the top of B, or like right behind a ro no, top of B. Troll's Roar is actually pretty insane, just how far the distance of where it lands. And definitely if you do, you know, fight people who have like heavier weapons, they don't have the layway of like, you know, hitting you and rolling and, you know, for sure avoiding Trolls Roar. So if you do fight people who have like, again, bigger weapons, try to find moments where you could trade into them and you'll probably most likely land Trolls Roar, get them on the floor, and then you could do like a chase down. It just flows really well and it's surprisingly pretty decent. I liked it. So I'm gonna put it on the top of B. So next one is Glintstone Pebble. So this is the version that is in 1.09. If it was back then in early patches, this would probably be at the top of S, but it is not, so we'll be talking about that one today. So Glenstone Pebble, you just shoot a magic, and you have the option of doing a follow-up where you kind of thrust forward towards to where you aimed at. So before this Ash War used to be amazing, it's where if you do land the pebble, you for sure get a guaranteed you know, true combo to the follow-up attack. But after some patch, I forget which one it was, they did some changes which basically nerfed this Ash War. So the distance of the pebble goes farther, but it has less poise damage, so you're not able to always get that stun state, where you can 100% of the time follow it up to like a true combo. Now it's more like if the enemy has like lower poise, you probably could still combo into it, but because a lot of people do wear bigger armor, that just doesn't happen. So most of the time when you are using this Ash Ward, you're just spamming that pebble. The projectile goes really far, does a good amount of damage. If you see them approaching in with a roll to dodge the pebble, sometimes you want to throw in that thrust once in a while to, you know, try to get the end of that roll animation. Otherwise, if you just do it preemptively, the enemy would just, you know, punish you for it because it is not true anymore. That's why in the Ash Ward highlight video, I just spammed that pebble like crazy because it goes really far, good enough tracking, and it's decently fast in how it comes out. And then just once in a while throw in the follow-up to do like a mix-up. Because if you do hit them with both parts, it just does a lot of damage, especially with the spell blade set. Honestly, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it in the higher and the B because it's still great, but just not as insane as it was before. I think it's pretty okay. So next one is Stamp, but the sweet version. 
So Stamp does have two follow-up attacks. One is the light version, which is just, you know, a horizontal swing. And then you have the heavy version, which does kind of a spin where it has two hitboxes, an initial smaller one, and then a longer windup from doing the spin. So the unfortunate thing about Stamp Sweep, I think if it was just one hit, I think it will work a lot more. But because there's two hits, if an enemy poises through like the first part, because it's not as strong as the second hit, they could just roll away. They're more aware of it. So it's just really hard to land. But if your enemy has low poise, low armor, it's definitely easier to land it because the first hit will probably lead to the second hit really smoothly and it will just combo very well. So again, it's unfortunate. And also this is probably just a preference pick. You might like the sweet one more, mostly because like, you know, it is a horizontal hit. It covers a space around you. I think it covers like pretty much 270 around you, 270 degrees, 280, probably like literally your back. I don't think you hit, but like it covers around pretty much your entire body. So I'm gonna put this in B. Um, I already mentioned it, so probably gonna be somewhere in B. I like it more than Lion's Claw. Probably right there. Honestly, that's probably where I put it. All right, so like to see our B tier is getting pretty long. I'm just gonna slide this one down here to C. There you go. All right, so we're on to our last Astro War, which is Lightning Slash. I do think there's like some true combos you could do to land Lightning Slash, but we just wanna talk about Lightning Slash on his own, like with the weapons. I think the true combos involve like incantations or something, but we just wanna keep it within the weapon that you use and the Ash War that it is. So if we're talking about Lightning Slash as a buff, I think it's amazing. I'll probably put it somewhere at A or S because Lightning as a buff to your weapon is insane. It's great if you're fighting people in wet terrain, they're touching water. Overall, as a buff, Lightning is great. Okay, so now let's talk about the second part of it. This is where Lightning Slash kind of goes down for me, is using it as a, like an attacking tool. So Lightning Slash is very hard to land on its own. One is pretty telegraphed. You had to do the animation where you're imbuing your weapon with lightning, and then you had to slam it down, hit your enemy, and also do the lightning. So all that takes a lot of time. So I think Lightning Slash would be a lot better if it had more hyper armor. I do believe that if you are doing the swinging motion where your swords are already imbued with lightning, I think you do have a lot of hyper armor there, but that's already too deep into the animation. Enemies are probably really far away from you. They're probably rolling away from you. So keeping in mind the buff, the amazing buff that is lightning, the lightning attribute, and the downsides of the actual Ashwar as an attacking tool. You gotta keep those two in mind. And I think where I want to put it is honestly somewhere in C. I think it's better than Sacred Ring. I think Storm Assault has moments where it's better, especially if your enemy has lower poise. And depending on your weapon, you could just combo the initial wind box, the initial startup, and then, you know, get the downward thrust on the sky when you come down. I think all of that is still very much better than Lightning Slash. So yeah, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that a C. So before we end it, let's make some adjustments. I was thinking about this before I was looking at my old tier list. I, I want to put Phantom Slash at the end of S. I do want to keep it up here mostly for a bias, and I think it's very good still. But I don't think it's probably not at the top here. Definitely probably towards the end compared to all of these here, which you could pretty much slap into any weapon and you're you're probably gonna have a good time with it. I'm gonna move Black Flame Tornado above here. It has a lot more hyper armor and I do like it more than Lion's Claw. I think that's the final adjustments I'm gonna make for right now. So yeah, we'll come back again in the future after another five or seven and we'll see how this looks and where we'll move things. Besides putting, you know, your favorite Ash War and your least favorite, maybe put where you will make adjustments. Do you think something's too high, something's too low? Do you think it's just right? What's your reasoning? Because I am, again, open to changing parts of my Ash War tier list, but this is where I am right now. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Catch you next time.